World leaders are gearing up for Donald Trump's return to the White House, but they are prepping in rather unique ways, ranging from golf to English lessons. South Korean President Yoon suk yeol is polishing his putting skills, hoping a round or two of golf could set the stage for big conversations. Others, like Indonesian president, took a vastly different approach aiming to connect with Donald Trump. Leaders around the world are readying themselves for Donald Trump's next chapter. And here's more on the preparations these leaders are in fact making. The 47th president of the United States. With Donald Trump back in office, global leaders are polishing up their putting skills and English vocabulary, preparing for an unprecedented swing in diplomacy. Trump, an avid golfer himself, has a history of completing business deals and meetings at the 19th hole. And now, as Trump returns to the White House, South Korea is expecting to boost diplomatic relations on the Greens. South Korean President Yoon suk yeol is relearning golf and practicing his swings in the nets. After staying away from the golf course for nearly eight years, President Yoon now finds himself spending his free time on the fairway. President Yoon has a knack of wooing American presidents. In 2023, the South Korean leader sang his rendition of the famous Don McLean song, American Pie. Music used to make me smile. This happened at a state dinner with current President Joe Biden. And now, with Donald Trump making a comeback, President Yoon has dropped the mic and picked up the golf clubs. But why golf? Because it's one activity that Donald Trump truly cherishes. During his first presidency, Donald Trump reportedly played 261 rounds of golf. That's at least one round every week. Donald Trump also owns at least 18 golf courses across three continents. While a majority of the president-elect's golf courses are in the United States, he also owns fairways in Scotland, Ireland, Dubai, Oman and Indonesia. Clearly, Donald Trump takes his golf seriously. And South Korea's President Yoon doesn't want to be caught in the bunkers. However, golf isn't the only thing on the minds of world leaders. Indonesia's new president, Prabowo Subianto, has shown his readiness to connect, posting a congratulatory video for Trump. In the video, he called Trump Sir multiple times and offered to meet him personally. When Trump shrewdly appreciated the Indonesian president's English, Prabowo thumped with excitement and saw an opportunity to strengthen U.S.-Indonesia relations. Nice to talk to you. How are you? Fine, thank you. Uh, I would like to congratulate you on your election as President of the United States of America. I would like, uh, thank you so much. if possible, I would like to call personally on you. Wherever you are, I'm willing to fly to congratulate you personally, sir. Oh, that's so nice. That's so nice. Well, we'll do that anytime you want, but uh, we'll Great job you're doing in Indonesia. Great, great job. Proud of you. Sir, Very I... amazing. And, you, and your English is so good. Yes, sir, I've been... Very good, the English. I, I've been to... I've, more, all my training is American, sir. Ah, that's great. That's <laughs> <amazing. laughs> you know, we, had, we, we had a great time South Korean President Yoon and Indonesian President Prabowo aren't the only ones preparing for Donald Trump's return to the White House. Leaders of France, Germany and Australia are also making efforts of backtracking from previous insults which were once directed at Trump. As world leaders prepare for Trump's unconventional style, they are well aware that this administration might call for creative, flexible diplomacy. From the fairways to the negotiation tables, the next four years could bring unexpected opportunities for cooperation and a reshaping of alliances.